We have the largest population we've ever had of young people on the continent. Skills are the way for the future. At the end of the day, we need skills to be able to spur the economy of a particular nation. If the majority of people in a country don't have those skills, it's very, very hard for them to participate. And if they don't participate, the economy doesn't grow. Leaders, government, private sector in particular really need to think through what it is we can do collectively. Africa must, not should, must make skills development a priority. Skills and employment is crucial to Africa's economy. We need the political will to realize our efforts to achieve decent jobs, especially amongst the youth of the African populace. Many companies or many workplaces, they ask for a skill. You know, a, a, a simple skill can really make you be a number one choice in the career that you are in. Anybody who is equipped with skills now can actually present themselves for, for an opportunity which would create a difference in their life. If a young person is able to have any technical skills, he or she is able to employ him or herself to get his daily bread and maybe have a family. The right skills will give you the right productivity, they'll give you the right quality of products, so you cannot de-link economic development with skills development. We've been talking a lot about the future of work and the skills that will be needed in that future of work. So we have to look at how to reskill our population to be able to fit this changing world of work. So we need to make sure that the curriculums that we are using to teach our young people are curriculums that will build the skills that are needed. Employers and governments must work together to understand the skill needs in the labour market. We need to have a policy that looks at all around people who are uh, special needs, gender, to access the skills development. This is required because employers and the private sector know what the jobs that are there. Secondly, they know what are the skills that are required and hence they are in a better position to inform what they are looking from the education institutions. Collaboration with private sector is promoted in a number of ways within BuildHer. The first is that as we develop and implement our curriculum, we actually go to market to engage employers to make sure the curriculum fits their needs. We also engage government to understand what their targets are. The other collaboration which NITA is doing, we have sector skills committees. Sector skills committee membership is drawn from the industry representation and we use them to help us maintain parity with the trends of the industry. In addition to not only providing inputs on the skilling and the requirements side, the private sector can also play a pivotal role in providing feedback and inputs to the curriculum that our youths are learning. The end result should be the same, developing graduates who are fit for purpose. It's just a question of understanding how this can be a lot more customized and tailor-made to the economic opportunities that are available. I want to upgrade myself to be the first Kenyan woman, uh, the African lady, to come up with something. Like one, a, a modern of myself, a vehicle that I have made for myself to be used in my country. The idea of training these young people is not for them to be employed by someone alone. They can be employed, which is a good thing, but they should also be given the possibility and opportunity to go out and open their own businesses. And for that to happen, they do have to have physical policies that encourages them to do so. And governments have to be aware that uh, uh, stimulating youth entrepreneurship is not only good for the economy, it is good for social uh, stability.
the sense of a traditional degree that has been prevalent for the last for, uh, for the last 100 years or so has slowly but surely been eroding as a way to secure one's future. Instead, people are looking at what skills do you have. It's a fact that uh, a lot of people think that Tibet is not for the academically gifted, but it is not true. We are dependent on things that are made using skills that are acquired in Tibet. The houses we live in, the cars we drive, the roads we drive on. They are all resorts of Tibet. Surely those are not resorts of failure. They are resorts of people who are actually successful. These occupations almost guarantee employment. Effect shown by our, our, our employment tracer study, which we conduct as INLELA or as the Department of Higher Education and Training, where in the last tracer survey that we conducted for the year 2017-18, the figures that came out of that showed us that 77% uh, of those that qualify qualified in this particular year, they actually, that was the rate of their employment. Mainstreaming job creation for the youth is absolutely essential in all the public policies that we design, uh, transport policies, energy policies, every policy, agricultural policies, need to have a strategic component related to job creation. The truth is for our upmarket industries to work and even trendy and, and, and in more innovative and current industries to work, we need implementers, we need artisans, we need people of different skill sets contributing to that path. I think society will let down young people. We let them know that the only jobs that are worthy of dignity are if you're wearing a suit. And if you're wearing a suit, then you can't work anywhere else except in an office. That for me was a disservice, okay? I didn't realize how much of a disservice until I went to live in other countries. So we can't blame young people, okay? That they want, of course, to go for the high paying jobs of lawyers and doctors, as opposed to what we pay our plumbers, what we pay our electricians, okay? And when they are faced with their visual optics, it's a natural decision to make that I want to be the one wearing a suit, let somebody else who's wearing those overalls work for me because there's no dignity in the quality of the jobs. In any person, soft skills are quite important and vital. We endeavor to produce a graduate who has both the technical skills and as well the soft skills to create an age over the rest as they get into the labor market. Soft skills, they make a well-trained person employable. So other than the hard skills or the core skills, soft skills are very, very necessary. As an IT student, uh, I have really learned a lot and through our teachers and the management. Uh, the skills that I've been taught, uh, I think, and I know it can really help me elsewhere. I was a beneficiary of uh, technical education at a time and age about 40 years ago when it actually worked, when it was a priority. Something seemed to have happened right across this continent and we decided that technical education was not important, but uh, you know, academic education was important. We wanted as many university graduates as possible. And now we are scrambling, but I'm glad that we are actually doing that because uh, that was a misguided policy. I don't know where it came from, and I'm glad that people are realizing and that we are working very hard to change it. We know that by 2050, more than half of the continent's population is going to be youth under the age of 25. So as Africans, we need to be asking, what are we doing for this population? For the young people, I think what we need to sell to them is there is no glory in the academics and the skills that you acquire and use with your hands is no less than someone standing in class or an astronaut or an engineer. They are all needed in the economy. The important thing is that you find your space, what you enjoy doing, you work at it with all your heart, make sure you excel in it, and you make a difference.
we have been lit up. So it is up to us to take up to speed, to take the skills, to, to take even our, our, our learning seriously and put it out there. The, the motivation that I can give out is just be confident in what you're doing. Don't look what your friends are saying. It's good to have your own skills. And just stand out, be courageous on what you are doing.